Hello, my name is Samuel Stokes with SamuelStokesMusic.com and today I wanted to talk about how uh, the top row of number keys uh, work on Finale when you use them with the simple entry tool. So let's start by opening in the file menu, go to new document from, well we'll do document setup wizard this time. So go to the document setup wizard, we're just going to pick a piano. So we're going to say is default select to create new ensemble, click next. I go to keyboards, piano, no staff name. Whenever you have solo piano, you usually don't have a staff name on the side. It's kind of redundant. Uh, and I'm not going to bother entering any of this stuff right now. We're just going to do a little test template here set up. So what I wanted to show you is how to really quickly enter tall stacked chords because you have to do this in piano writing quite a bit. Um, so I wanted to show you first of all if I wanted to write some chords like this let's see and then we'll do oh, drag that in the right place. And it's really kind of cumbersome here to type these out one by one clicking them all in the right place. Let's say we want that. And so we have a one, four, one, five. And what if we wanted to do, you know, say do some big octaves here in the bass to really beef up that sound of those chords. And way on down here to the five. Okay, well now we have some nice big sounding stacked chords on the piano. So here's what it sounds like. And of course you want that to resolve back to one eventually. Uh, not yet. <laughs> so what I want to show you though is how you can do this much faster by using the top row of numbers on the keyboard. So on the computer keyboard that is. Um, so first of all we're still on the quarter note here with a simple entry palette. That's what this one is called. Um, so if I click on C, if I press 1, it gives me a unison. Every once in a while you see this sort of thing in music where you have um, the same note. <laughs> not, not so much on piano, it doesn't really have much purpose for us, but sometimes you'll see something like that. Um, but uh, if we click on middle C and then click 2, you get a second above. Click on C and click 3, now we have the third click on that and press 4 on the top row. Now this is the top row of numbers, not the numeric keypad. The numeric keypad does something different, which we'll talk about another time. Um, so you press 4 to get a fourth here, and then you get a fifth by pressing 5. Press 6, you get a sixth. Press 7, you get a seventh. Press 8, you get an octave. So you can get everything from a unison up to an octave. Now it's as high as it goes. Um, 9 and 0 don't do anything, um, at least with the simple entry palette. So you can get all of those intervals. Now to make these stack chords like this, you just have to think about consecutive intervals. So from C to E is a third, E to G is a third, G to the next C is a fourth. So in order to do that, first of all I'm going to use the select tool and get rid of this little test here by hitting the delete button. And what I want to show you is you remember how slow that was when I when I sat in, you know, clicked every single note one at a time, because you have to really aim and make sure that you're right on the right spot, line or space. So that takes a little while. I'm gonna I'm gonna use control Z consecutively here to undo all of those so I can go back and show you. Now in order to do this, remember I said it's a third, third and a fourth. So you click the C click 334. I just really quickly did 334 on the keyboard and see how fast I was. Now the next one, see the fourth is on the bottom because we have uh, an inverted uh, triad in the right hand. It's inverted. Technically it's not because the left hand has the bass. But uh, fourth, third, and a third. So I would click the C and then go 433. Three. See how quick that is? Go back, do that first one again, 334. Now this one, you see how that's a third, a third, a second, and a third, so it would go 3-3-2-3. Three, three, three. So if I click on B and go 3-3-2-3, three, 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 
See how quick that is? Now with the left hand, these are all octaves, so I just keep my left finger here, one of my left fingers on the eight, and then I just quickly press the, the uh, note that I want, click the note that I want, and then quickly press eight right after that. So click eight, and then it goes really quick. All right, so now a little speed run here. We're gonna see how fast I can I can uh, copy this measure uh, if I do it without talking. So here we go. See how fast that was. <laughs> that was just by learning how to use those intervals, being able to first of all recognize them at sight and. Uh, also to be able to think of them in your head. So I'm thinking about what those shapes are um, and then just clicking them in. You know, click the bottom note in each hand and then just think of the intervals above and type them in consecutively. All right, now we want that to end on a conclusive C major chord. So let's make that resolve by using the same method. So you see that's a lot quicker when you're doing piano scores and you're using simple entry palette to enter them, it is a lot quicker to use those interval numbers to be able to build the tall chords. Um, it's not as needed in other instruments such as uh, flute, for example. Most of the time, unless you're doing some extended techniques, you're only playing one note at a time on the flute. Um, and on violin, although sometimes you might have double stops and triple stops. Um, you know, for, and trumpet, any wind instruments, you're usually just playing one note at a time, like I said, unless it's extended technique of some sort. Um, so, uh, but for instruments, keyboard instruments in particular, where you're often having to play more than one note at the same time, this can be very, very useful, save you a lot of time. So, let's end by playing back our lovely chordal cadences here. All right, well, I hope that was a helpful tutorial. Uh, remember to subscribe and comment below if you have any suggestions on things that I could do better or things that you would like to see a video about in the future. Thank you.